Jitsi Meet, the privacy respecting video conferencing solution, has kind of shut down anonymous account creation. But while this is alarming, uh, there's definitely some nuance to it, so let's dive into this news. First, for those who don't know, Jitsi Meet is pretty much an open source alternative to Zoom. When Zoom was getting popular because of the pandemic, Jitsi Meet was pretty much the main cited uh, alternative for people who value privacy. Now, Jitsi is open source and anyone can host it themselves. So you who's watching this video can theoretically create your own domain and actually host Jitsi on your own domain and have other people you know connect to it. This is pretty awesome. Previously, you just go on there and type a random room name and just create your room and then you just share that link with anyone and it's essentially an anonymous registration. There is no registration. You just go online and anyone can use it. Now, unfortunately, Jitsi has come forward and said they are stopping this process. Um, they're not being very upfront, but trying to read between the lines, it seems like there was some moderation issues. It sounds like some things were being done on the platform or there was some kind of platform abuse that was going on, uh, which for the record, I mean, kind of makes sense. It was a completely free option. And hello, Kat is joining again. Um, it was another free option that anyone can join and register for without even an email. So I'm not super surprised they were having issues with that, but it's still a huge bummer, especially because uh, their implementation of a non-anonymous registration is actually very unfortunate. So let's dive into it. They're not even allowing you to register with an email and a password and in a, you know, a traditional account creation process. The only way that you can actually use Jitsi Meet now is through Google, GitHub and Facebook. That's it. It's just those three platforms. And look, I'm actually not totally against some of these single sign-in providers because I think they actually bring a lot of perks to the table in some capacity. They also bring drawbacks in certain capacities as well. It really depends on who you are and what you're looking for, but I don't think they're inherently bad. What I am against is all three of these providers are providers that people in the privacy community really generally don't like. And there's actually other providers that uh, are really good and well-respected in the privacy community. Uh, Simple Login comes to mind, and we actually implemented Simple Login on the Techler forum for this reason, because all of our other providers, people you know, had issues with something regarding the privacy practices, but Simple Login generally fares better, and I really like how they provide this process for people. So just to summarize, Jitsi Meet, which is the main way that people avoid Zoom and interact with Jitsi, has now not only removed anonymous room creations, but they're now requiring you to have a Google, GitHub, or Facebook account. If you don't have those accounts or you don't want to use them, uh, then screw off pretty much. To analyze the situation and give some of my personal feedback here. One, Jitsi is a really great organization. I don't think they're doing this with bad intent. I know everyone in the privacy world wants to jump to everyone doing things for nefarious purposes, but they have a history of really upholding privacy. And if you read their article, they very much sound like they wish they could have kept this anonymous thing open. I don't know what's going on behind the scenes and they might not be able to tell us what happened behind the scenes. But all I can tell you is from my perspective, I think they truly care about privacy. Otherwise they wouldn't have offered that privacy respecting option in the first place. So we're actually no worse off than we were if they didn't exist in the first place. And so they're still bringing a net gain. And more importantly, they even suggest at the very end to check out other instances that allow anonymous account registration. So again, I wanna remind you that Jitsi is entirely open source and you can host it yourself. And in fact, there are, we're, we're gonna talk about them soon, some different alternatives that you all can use. And that's partly why I wanna make this video so you all know how to uh, video conference with other people in a privacy respecting fashion. It's unfortunate. You know, it really is unfortunate and I'm with everyone on that, that it's sad. But let's talk about alternatives. So my favorite alternative, and I've actually used this in the past, is Calyx Meet. So Calyx Meet is actually Jitsi. Uh, if you look at it, it's the same UI. It's their own self-hosted form of Jitsi, and it's from the same people who developed Calyx OS. So it's from the Calyx Institute. They have a nice little team over there. I love a lot of the stuff they do over there. And so Calyx Meet is a great option for some of you out there. Another one that I've tried is Brave Talk, which is just directly integrated into the Brave browser. So if you use Brave, just go there and just tap call right there and then. Uh, it is a little bit limited, just so you know, on the free version, but it's worked plenty for me for just basic video conferencing needs. And also don't forget some of your basics. You know, a lot of people want to rely on a dedicated 
a video conferencing tool like Zoom, Jitsi, and all these things that are, you know, pretty fancy for what they are, but you can always just use Signal. And Signal nowadays on desktop has screen sharing. So you can even share your screen with people on Signal and it supports a ton of people there and it's entirely free. And shoot, you can even use native tools like FaceTime and whatnot. So um, those are all my options and things that I've played with and that I personally use. Now, aside from that, on our forum uh, down below, I'll leave a link, uh, people who had a lot of other options as well. And actually someone linked to a whole directory of Jitsi instances that you can go ahead and check out and use yourself. So actually, this is why I really enjoy the situation, you know? Um, Jitsi set themselves up in a way, and I talked about this recently in uh, the video about why a VPN provider won't uh, save your butt for $5 and getting into the nuance of that discussion. And in that discussion, I talked about how the best privacy respecting companies will actually put systems in place from the get go to protect their customers in the event where something happens, where they need to start tracking users or anything else happens. And Jitsi's done exactly that. Jitsi is developed in a way from the ground up so that anyone who's watching this video can host an instance of Jitsi because it's entirely open source. And so even if Jitsi, the company, uh, is compelled for any reason or is in a situation where they have to start requiring registration for users, someone else doesn't have to do that. So again, huge props to Jitsi. They have really done such a great job to develop uh, their software in a way where we can still respect users' privacy, even if Jitsi is now forced to do things that probably aren't the best for privacy. Now, I'm not letting them off the hook because I don't think there's any excuse for them not to have more sign-in options. Um, especially coming from a privacy first company, I really wish that they had some more privacy respecting options. And it's not even the implementation. A lot of these SSO providers, I'm not really too upset about the implementation. It's more of just the requirement of the account. Like it's silly how um, a user has to have a Google, GitHub or Facebook account to now interact with this platform. So it'd be cool if they offered some other options at minimum, if not some more private options. Personally, I'd be taking a look at that simple login one, um, though I don't know if it meets the requirements, I'm not on their team. So just to summarize the video, um, thank you Jitsi for developing your software in a way where um, we can properly deal with the situation at hand. Uh, sorry to the community and I, I'm also upset as well um, that they had to start requiring registration for this. Um, but fortunately there's a ton of alternatives that we can all utilize uh, to still get away from Zoom and all these other platforms that are privacy invasive. And um, if you've never heard what, what those issues are, I made a whole video covering Zoom security issues way back in the day. But since then, just a basic what search engine will tell you some of the stuff that Zoom does, um, it's probably not the best for your privacy, unfortunately. So um, anything you do to get away from Zoom is probably a net gain for your privacy and the people around you. And again, if you wanna see what those alternatives are, I'll link you down to our forum down in the description. There's a ton of options there. And also join the forum. I mean, it's a great place to talk. I learned things from my forum. I wouldn't have found a lot of those alternatives if it wasn't for my forum. And so it's a place for all of us to learn and kind of share what we know to help each other's privacy and help us along on this journey. So yeah, that's really it for this video. Just a little PSA. Wanted to let you all know about this issue and how to get around it so you all can still stay private uh, when you're trying to video conference or just get on video with your loved ones or coworkers or peers. Uh, whatever it's for. So I'll see you guys next time on TechLore. Um, and yeah, I think that's all I have to say. Peace out.